Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is my review of the 2016 Razorblade, highly anticipated product. In comparison to last year's model, this one's thinner, more powerful, and yet somehow it's $400 cheaper. Sounds pretty good, right? Let's take a look. So the box this year is pretty similar to last year's. It's a black box with a bright green trim and inside you get the laptop, AC adapter, and a pack of pamphlets with the cleaning cloth and some stickers. The top surface is a black anodized aluminum. It's a different material from the 2015 blade. That was rough and not pleasant to hold. This is the same smoother finish as a razor blade stealth. The razor logo lights up and even if you turn off the logo lighting, the back lighting from the screen still gives it a glow. It has the same aluminum material on the bottom and you can access the internals by removing some screws. The drive in here is yet again that PM951 from Samsung where the smaller the drive is, the slower they are. This is a 256 gig. Read speeds are good, but the write speeds aren't so hot. The 512 gig will have faster writes. It's around twice as fast, but it's still not amazing and I'd like to see better drives at this price point. The good thing is that if you want to swap it out, it's easy to do. The RAM is soldered on, it's got 16 gigs, which is plenty for gaming, and the fans have been redesigned. If you take a look at them, they have a bit of a concave shape to them, and they're also easy to access if you ever need to clean them out. The screen construction is super solid, there's essentially no flex to it, and same with the hinge. Excellent tension out of the box, and it's a one hand open. The keyboard area is also very rigid. Now, I'm critical about build quality, and in terms of the exterior build of the Razer, it's awesome. It's better than last year's model, and I'd say it's equal to the build quality of a MacBook. If I had to nitpick at something, I guess the plastic hinge cover here could be better, but that's really all I got. Now it looks super cool to have a black anodized laptop, but underneath this black is a super shiny silver and nicks and chips are gonna sparkle like a diamond. I highly recommend getting a sleeve or a skin for the laptop. Dbrand skins even have an option to hide the logo if you want. I'll put a link down below. For ports, it has three USB 3s, a combo audio jack, HDMI port, and of course a Thunderbolt 3 port that you can connect to the Razer Core. There's no SD card slot again this year. Now for kicks, I tried charging it with the Thunderbolt 3 port, but it didn't seem to work with the Razer Blade Stealth Charger. If you're unfamiliar with the Core, it's an external box that you can connect to boost your graphics performance. If you want to learn more about it, there's a link up top, and I'm going to be doing a review of the Core with both Razer laptops shortly, so be subscribed for that. The Chroma keyboard is pretty cool. You can do lots of fun stuff with it. There's a lot of options in the menus to make it go from rainbow to solid to breathing to reactive buttons. It's pretty neat, but don't make it the main reason that you buy it. The novelty will probably wear off quickly. The keyboard itself is really good. It definitely feels better than the Stealth keyboard because each keystroke has a little bit more travel. It also still has the anti-ghosting feature for maximum spam, and I think it's a keyboard that most people will like. The glass trackpad is good. It's an excellent texture, not too smooth, and the controls actually feel better than the Stealth trackpad. What I don't like are the buttons. They feel like they're the same buttons as last year. They feel and sound cheap, and they're small, right? So it took me over a week to get used to it. And once you've been spoiled with a Force Touch trackpad where you can click wherever you want, it kind of sucks to be clicking on a tiny sliver of a button. The screen on this model is a 14 inch IGZO touchscreen running at 3200 by 1800. Viewing angles and color gamut are pretty good, but I would calibrate it if you can. It gets pretty bright, 330 nits, but it's a glossy screen, so it's not great outdoors. The weird thing is that the lowest brightness setting isn't very dim, so if you plan on using it in the dark a lot, that might bug you. The webcam up top is two megapixel, looks pretty good. The bezels on the sides aren't too bad, but the top bezel is pretty big. I'm not in love with that. The speakers are pointing upward, and for a thin laptop, they sound good. They definitely sound better than the Razer Blade Stealth speakers. They sound clear, they get loud, and the bass isn't bad, but they're not as good as the speakers on thicker laptops. It's running a quad-core Skylake chip and a GTX 970M, so the Razer Blade handles games well. It's an older chip, so there's tons of benchmarks on the web, but you're gonna get excellent gaming performance for light to moderately demanding titles. 60 frames per second on max graphics settings, 1080p. Something heavier, like Rainbow Six Siege, will still get 55, 60 frames per second with high graphics settings at 1080p. For extremely demanding titles, you'll need to reduce your graphics quality or resolution. At 1080p, I had to play on low to medium settings to get smooth frame rates in the new Doom. Granted, this is one of the most hardware demanding games right now. And if you're thinking of playing at the native resolution of 3200 by 1800, unless you're playing Agario or something, don't do it. Last year's razor blade ran really hot. This year, the fans and heat pipes have been redesigned and it's running a Skylake chip, so temperatures are better. It's still hot. The good thing is the fans are strong enough to keep the clock speed up. Now these fans are quiet on idle and even when watching a movie, they spin, but you won't really hear them. But when you're playing a very demanding game, the fans can get super loud. You'll probably want headphones. 
It uses a 165 watt adapter. Under normal use, I was getting around five and a half hours of battery life, screen at 60%. Playing games, I got around one and a half hours and to charge the battery up, it takes around two and a half hours. All right, the 2016 Razorblade 14 starts at around $2,000. It has a really solid unibody chassis, excellent build quality, but get a skin or a sleeve for it. It has a 14 inch touchscreen that's bright and color accurate, but the bezels are a little big. The speaker is well positioned and sound pretty good for a thin laptop. The keyboard has fun chroma lighting and it's a good typing experience. The trackpad is good, the buttons are not so good. On the inside, the Skylake quad-core i7 and the GTX 970M are strong performers, but the system can get pretty hot. The 16 gigs of RAM can't be upgraded, but it's more than enough for gaming. The 256 gig drive is a little slow on writes, but it is upgradable. And powering all of this is a 70 watt hour battery that gets around five to five and a half hours of regular use. So this year's Razorblade, it's still an expensive laptop, but it's a better product at a significantly cheaper price compared to last year. Now in terms of its thermals, it still runs hot, hotter than I'd like it to, but that's just the nature of the beast. When you build something this thin and this powerful, it's gonna run warm. But if you are looking for a laptop that's thin and powerful and can crush games, this is one of the best available on the market right now. That's the end of this video. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.